Hey, Rob Arnold here, and today I'm gonna to give you a quick and easy explanation and example on how to easily intonate your guitar or bass so that it sounds more in tune and just better overall. Intonation is the accuracy of pitch across every note on the fretboard. If I play a C here, is it in tune with a C here? Or here? Or here? All of those were C's. And by the way, this particular guitar is tuned to drop C, C, G, C, F, A, D, low to high. But the tuning I'm in is irrelevant as these intonation principles apply to any tuning. The more accurate the pitch of every note on the fretboard is, the more in tune your playing will sound. That's also especially important when playing chords as chords are a combination of two or more notes and the better in tune each individual note sounds, the better that chord will sound. Intonation is the last step in the setup process. After you've put on new strings and properly stretched them out, got the guitar all tuned up, maybe even worked in a little bit. Then you make your truss rod adjustments if necessary, set your float if you're using a floating bridge like a Floyd Rose, then set your action, and then finally your intonation. And you adjust a string's intonation by adjusting the scale length, which is the distance between the end of the string and the saddle to where it meets the nut. And if you find that certain areas of your neck sound more in tune than others, your guitar probably needs to be intonated. And by setting the proper scale length of each string, the notes of each string should be more in tune across the entire length of the fretboard. Some major reasons why your guitar may require intonation adjustments could be changing tunings, that's an obvious one. Uh, you're going from E to D or down to C or even just a simple drop tuning. Any major change like that, definitely gonna require an intonation adjustment. Also your string gauge plays a big factor in your intonation as well. So if you're changing gauges, you're gonna probably need an intonation. Your action or height of the strings off the fretboard play a factor as well, because with higher action, the string is shorter and with lower action, the string is slightly longer. And this is an example of why you'd wanna make intonation adjustments after something like action adjustments. And finally, the condition of your strings play a major role as well. New strings are obviously preferable and older strings may require more frequent adjustments. The last thing I'd like to note is that the proper way to do an intonation is to be holding the guitar in the playing position, not flat on a bench like I have it here, but I have it here just for filming purposes. But for you, I recommend however you sit comfortably when you're just jamming, practicing, anything like that is how you'd wanna make your adjustments in that position because even little things, and we're splitting hairs here, but even little things like gravity and the magnetism from the pickups play a role in your intonation and it's gonna be slightly different sitting down like this versus standing or in the playing position. Again, we're splitting hairs here, but if you're gonna take the time to do something like this, you may as well do it right. So the first step is to get the string in perfect tune when plucked open. Then we compare that open note to the fretted 12th note. The 12th fret is the exact middle point between the end of the string here in the saddle to where the string meets the nut. So you wanna have it the same tuning as the open note. And of course, these notes are octaves of one another. When you're fretting the 12th fret, try to apply a consistent pressure each time, or to put it more simply, fret the note cleanly each time to avoid variables. Just fret it gently and not too hard or not too soft so that the note rings clean. Also, how you attack the string is important, how soft or hard you hit it. I recommend just plucking it gently, but most importantly, consistently. That will give you the best results. If you strike too hard, it might register sharp but you can usually just go with where the note settles. So like where it's falling on the tuner after a couple seconds after you pluck the string, and oftentimes that's what I rely on. So you can see here when I pluck my first string that it's perfectly in tune, and when I pluck the 12th fret, it's slightly sharp. So we're gonna need to make an adjustment, and we're gonna make that adjustment and do the same thing on each string until every fretted 12th note is as closely in tune as possible to the open note. On a fixed bridge like this, we'll make those adjustments by moving the position of each saddle. 
either toward the fretboard, which shortens the string, or away from the fretboard, which lengthens the string. While many bridges look different, the concept is the same. And in this case, tightening this screw will draw the saddle back away from the fretboard and loosening it will push it towards the fretboard. And how do we know which way to turn it for the desired results? By using a simple technique often referred to as chasing the needle. So here we've got an open note and it's perfectly in tune. Now when we strike the 12th fret, hopefully it's in perfect tune, but it's not. It's sharp or right of center. And that's the direction that we need to move the saddle, which will then force it into perfect pitch by compensating for that discrepancy. So again, if the fretted note is sharp or right of center, we're gonna move the saddle in the same direction to the right. If it's, let me try to find another one here. Perfect. So this one, open C on the fourth string, the fretted 12th fret is flat. So in this case, we're gonna to have to move the saddle that way. So we're just chasing the needle and it was called the needle. They say the needle because back in the day before digital tuners like this, you know, there was actually a needle, you know, and you'd have to, that's, that's how you tune. But, and you can still find those today. But at any rate, it's the same type of thing. We're left of center of perfect tune there. So we need to move the saddle left. So it's just the easy thing you try to remember. Left of center, you moving the saddle that way, right of center, moving the saddle that way. So I'm gonna do that now, starting with the first string here, and we need to move our saddle to the right because our 12th fret was a little bit sharp. So I'm gonna to need to tighten this screw. And while your setup might be a little bit different, with a little bit of trial and error, you'll figure out how to make that saddle move in the direction you want it to move. And in this case, I need to tighten the screw to move it back, and oftentimes, and in this case, I'm gonna to wanna to detune the string a little bit first because tightening it is gonna pull the saddle back, sharpening the string, which could break the string, or I may strip my screw head here, something like that. So I'm just detuning it a little bit so that I can make my adjustment. I'm gonna tighten this, which is gonna draw the saddle back. And how much do I need to go? It's a little bit of trial and error, but maybe you wanna go in like millimeter increments. And how much is a millimeter? Well, I use a 1.0 millimeter guitar pick. So regular, you know, I wouldn't call it too thick, but it's pretty stout pick there and you know that's just just a little bit of a point of reference about how far I'm going to move it there uh, a lot of time I have actually now more so nowadays what I do is I look just at my Phillips head screwdriver head there and you know I just note where I start with it kind of at the top if I can somewhere and then how many turns I'm going to do so I'm going to do a full turn start you know, only going around once, being 180 degrees, all the way around 360 degrees. I'm just gonna start there, retune. Okay, we got perfect tune. Let's check the 12th fret. Looking good. See, that was easy. Even if you see a blipper red, like I said, it's really where it settles. So we're looking good, let's move on. Second string. Little blip there. But so did the open. The open had a little blip. I'm calling that good. We're good. Third string. Okay, here we go. Definitely left of center. So the open is in perfect tune. 12th fret left of center. So because it's left of center, that's the direction we're gonna move our saddle. So in this case, I need to loosen a little bit. I'm just gonna start the full turn. Sometimes too, I'll give those a nice little tap to kind of seat it because you know, that's just metal on metal kind of moving there, maybe some to end a lot of tension happening and perhaps it didn't move or, you know, it may move a little bit on its own before. But so anyways, you just kind of tap that into place. Just a little trick of the trade. Get it back into perfect tune. 12th fret. Money. Excellent. Fourth string. 
Another example, left of center, it's flat. We're gonna move the saddle to the left. Full turn work before, we'll do that again. See how easy that is? You start with small adjustments, and take note where the saddle was, and then try moving it, and like I said, in like little increments, and you take multiple readings of the tuning, you know, to get it kind of averaged out, get it in tune, multiple readings of the 12th fret, and if you're good there, um, you know, maybe you overshoot it sometimes, you just make whatever adjustments necessary. You kind of just study and react, repeat if necessary. If it wasn't enough, you do a little bit more, keep tuning, take general readings, and then just get it so as close as you possibly can and then move on to the next string. Left to center on the fifth string there. I'm gonna loosen that guy. Looking good. Maybe a tiny touch more. Seemed like it was right on the borderline of what I consider acceptable. Mm. Maybe went a little too far there, see? See what I said about overshooting it? Yeah, but see after multiple readings, it took a little time to adjust. Maybe I'll just give it the tiniest. I got a good feeling about that. Get it back in tune. One thing that I find, not to make excuses here, is that with lower tunings and thicker gauges, it gets a little more temperamental. Like I always notice the six string for me personally is the hardest to tune. It just dances around perfect all the time, especially in lower tunings. And like I said, with higher gauge strings. So this one, the C might be a little tougher. So I'll just try to get the average reading. It's pretty good there. We may be a little bit sharp on the tuner. Definitely. Okay, so it's right of center. We need to pull that back. This is a case where, because we're tightening, I'm gonna detune the string a little bit to give myself to take a little bit of tension off of here. Let's try that. Look at that, pretty darn good. I'll take it. One thing I like to note too, is that with a Floyd Rose, it's the same pr process, it's just a little more time consuming because you gotta loosen the string more significantly every single time to pull it aside to get to your little uh, nut there that needs to be uh, loosen so that you can move your saddle there. Now, oftentimes I kind of hold it with a screwdriver as I'm loosening so it doesn't slip out of place, but it's really important to take note of where it is on the Floyd there. Exact same principles, just takes a little bit longer. So I think we're good. Um, see, that was easy. And now this guitar, if I were to pick it up and strum it, would sound nice and tuned everywhere on the fretboard. And that's the point of this. So yeah, final tip here is to maybe save this video so that you can revisit it, study it, perhaps pass this knowledge on to a young player. The thing about intonation is, like I said, it's it's not something you're doing all the time, really only a bit after big uh, tuning changes, string gauge changes, even string brand changes. Uh, so as long as you keep those things consistent, which I recommend, then there's gonna be long stretches of time in between intonation sessions. And so you kind of may forget some of the methods or forget which way you're supposed to chase the tuner. So I'll find myself re-referencing videos all the time because like I said, long spans, you know, you sometimes forget things in there. If you're interested, this particular guitar, which is a beauty, is an ESP LTD 
M1000HT. I have a Sweetwater link uh, down in the description below if you'd like to check one out from yourself. It's also available in a seven string version. I'm also gonna leave video links to unboxing this guitar, which is really cool. And I have another video where I do a pickup comparison with the Fishman versus, versus an EMG81 with a similar guitar. So make sure you check those out. Again, links for all that can be found in the description below. And hey, while you're taking care of your guitars here, I want you to check out my guitar maintenance tutorials playlist here called the String Changing Series. I got it right here for you. Everything about floating bridges, um, just maintenance, string changing, my, my whole methods for string changing, all that. So I, I definitely hope you'll check that out. If you like this video, you found it informative, please give the video a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel here. Appreciate you watching. See you on the next one.